Welcome to Alex She's Aquarium, everybody. Today I'm going to be talking about my DIY HRV or heat recovery vent. And if you're not sure what an HRV is, that's okay. I'm going to explain it. I'm going to talk about why I have an HRV for my aquarium system. And of course, go into some detail about how I built it and how it's performing for my fish room. So, what is an HRV? Well, it is a device that allows you to exchange outside air with inside air while recovering heat energy, which doesn't really explain anything. But let me put it a different way. I live in Chicagoland and here in the Midwest of the United States, we got really hot summers, really cold winters, and a few narrow opportunities in between where the temperature of my house is about equal to the temperature outside. And the best way to exchange air normally for your home is to just simply open windows. The problem is on a really hot day, you're letting heat into the house you don't want, or on a really cold day, you're letting really cold air come into the house and you open up windows. Now, both of these actions of opening windows when the temperature is really different between inside and outside means that your air conditioning or your furnace is gonna have to run even more which is going to cost you a bunch of money. That's where an HRV comes in. Now the best way to really show you how an HRV works is to let you visually see what's happening. So I put a thermal camera onto this HRV while it was turned off and then I turned on my inline duct fans here to pull air through the HRV. I really want you to understand what's happening here. So on the top left you have outside air coming in which gets passed through the center here which is the core and then it goes out and into the fish room through a duct and an inline fan. On the other side here on the lower right we have air getting pulled in from the fish room itself so it's warmer air it passes through the core in this direction and it comes out up on the top right and then that duct gets exhausted outside. So effectively, what you're seeing happening here is that cold air is being heated up. And this, is, this core is what does the heat recovery and the heat recovery ventilation. So it's a pretty simple device. It is literally just a couple of duct fans and a heat exchanger here in order to make this work. And the best part about it is it works in the summer or the winter because this is a passive device. So it doesn't matter what temperature the air is coming in or out, it's still going to transfer that heat energy, whether you want it to come into the house or you want it to go out of the house. Now that I've explained what an HRV is, why do I want this for my aquarium system? What benefit does it give me as an aquarist? Well, my primary reason for getting an HRV was CO2 reduction. As a secondary function, this HRV will also help mitigate high humidity levels. Now, as long as the humidity outside is lower than it is inside, it will do that. If it's vice versa, my dehumidifier is just going to have to work a little bit harder as all. But CO2 reduction is really my primary focus for this HRV. And why is that? Well, my CO2 levels in my house generally sit about 1,000 parts per million to 1,100 parts per million in my fish room. That's pretty high considering the CO2 levels outside are about 430 parts per million. That's a huge difference between inside and outside, but why does it matter? Well, I've been very intrigued by all the reef aquarists out there that are working to raise their pH to higher and higher levels. And I've been starting to use calc washer in my system and I looked at CO2 scrubbing medias and talked to some of my friends at coral farms and while the CO2 scrubbing medias do work and it does definitely impact their pH, the problem they have is they get exhausted easy and really it's something that is just a reoccurring cost that can get quite expensive. And considering I'm going to have over 6,400 gallons of water when the big tank is done here, it was not the right option for me. And seeing how high the CO2 levels were in my fish room, I need another option, which is what brought me to an HRV. So why 
build a DIY HRV? Why not just go out and buy one? Well, it's real simple. I saved a ton of money doing this. It cost me less than $500 to build this HRV, purchase my inline duct fans for it, and all the duct work that I needed to get for it. So uh, while it still had a cost to it, it was a heck of a lot cheaper than outright purchasing an HRV, which I figure the HRV itself costs about 1500 bucks. You're probably now talking somewhere between $1,800 and $2,000 to install it and do all the ancillary work that you need for it as well. So really, it was just about cost savings for me with this. And it's a fun little project. It wasn't hard to do. I would rate this as being a fairly easy project if you just got some basic woodworking or tool skills. So how did I build this DIY HRV? Well, it all started by purchasing two AC Infinity inline duct fans. These are grow tent fans. I originally got them for ventilation for my tent in the aquarium when I was doing fiberglassing, but I knew I was going to use them for this HRV. So that was the first thing I got. They're 205 CFM per minute or cubic feet per minute of airflow using a four inch duct. And I want to stick with four inch because I've already got the hole saws and everything to it. So once I had those, uh, I also went ahead and drilled my holes on the outside of my house. Now the exhaust is about 10 feet away or so from the hot water heater and my furnace exhaust because those are high efficiency. So it's a little bit away from them. You don't want them close. And then the air intake is also over 10 feet away from the furnace and hot water heater. And those also have a, a fence separating them too. So there's a bit of a barrier. Attached insulated ducts to them. Whether it's hot or cold, that air that's going in or out is was well insulated. So with those done and, the, and having the duct fans, it was time to build the HRV box itself. Now the most important piece that you want to start with on this is the core. This core piece here is really going to dictate the size of your box uh, along with your duct size. Now the first thing I want to do with this core is determine what kind of material I wanted to make it out of. I needed something that was going to be thin, waterproof, and have channels flowing through it so that I could get this air pattern for the heat exchanger. And I ended up finding this plastic board. It's like corrugated plastic cardboard, basically. It has got these little tiny channels in it. And they go all the way through. This board is fairly rigid for as thin as it is, and it's ultra thin plastic, which means it'll transfer heat pretty good. And I got this stuff at Home Depot. It was about 30 bucks for a four by eight sheet. I used one and a quarter sheets to make up my DIY core here and I didn't do anything special to make this I just got a straight edge and a utility knife and I know the cuts aren't perfect and I don't really care uh, but I started making 12 inch by 12 inch squares now how many of these squares you use is something that you got to figure out to make the size of your core and so what I did was I figured out the area of the inside of one of these which is one quarter by one eighth inch so then I took that area and multiplied it by how many of those little channels I have to determine how much one 12 inch by 12 inch channel has so don't count any channels that are cut and not whole so it's good to kind of subtract one off each end uh, if not a couple so it's really important to know the area inside of one of these sheets because what you need to do is also figure out the area of a four inch diameter hole for the duct. So once you figure that out in square inches, you can calculate the square inches for each one of these sheets. And what I did was I doubled the number of square inches over the square inches of the duct. What this will do is allow the air to come into the HRV and when it enters the core, it can slow down a little bit because it has such a wide passage to go through before being re-accelerated out when it goes into a smaller duct. So it's really important with this. I doubled it up. Technically, you could triple or quadruple it. In the future, we'll see how this does this winter. 
Now, if it's not doing everything I need it to, I might actually extend this out and make it even wider. Because it'd be real simple to just extend the core and make another box uh, to latch onto this. Once you have all your squares and you figure out how many you need, whatever the number of pieces you need for air channels to cover double one of these ducts like the intake, you need to double the number of squares you cut because you have to account for the exhaust. So the air channels are going this way for the intake air and they're going this direction for the exhaust to get that crisscross pattern to get your heat recovery to take place in the heat exchanger. To get this assembled is real simple. Once you've got all your squares cut, you just want to make sure you clean them off with some isopropyl alcohol. You get yourself some Gorilla Glue adhesive spray, not for your hair. How I did this was just take two pieces, make sure they were crisscrossed, line them up, glue them down, stick a weight on top of them, and just let them sit there. Now I just made everything into tubes. And then I took the two stacks and made them four stacks and so on and so on until you build up the entire thickness of your core. And it's okay if it's not perfectly even, it's not going to hurt anything. Once you have your core, the only thing I added to the core was I have some weather stripping underneath it to help seal the core to the bottom of the box that it's going to be. So what I did was I took the thickness of this core plus the thickness of weather stripping and that determined the depth of the box I needed to make. To make this box was pretty simple. At Home Depot I bought PVC sheet. I bought a 48 by 24 inch half inch thick piece and a 48 by 24 inch by quarter inch piece. Got my table saw out. I ripped all the pieces here to make the outer part of the box out of half inch. The front and back are made of quarter. And the nice thing about this being PVC, once you've cut all the parts, all you have to do is get out your PVC cleaner primer and some glue. You do a little bit of sanding, you clean it all off, you put some PVC glue on it and glue it together just like you do plumbing. You could use some light clamping on it. This PVC is actually pretty flimsy on its own, but when you make it into a box structure, uh, it gets pretty strong. Once it was assembled, I drilled all of my intakes and exhaust holes. Then I put in some extra little dividers here to help hold the core in place. Originally with this core, I was going to try and use weather stripping to seal it in. It just didn't work out right. So I trimmed the corners of the core and then I just used Gorilla Tape to seal it up as best I could. Is there a little air leakage on it? Probably. Does it make a difference? No. So once you've got all this done, I uh, put weather stripping outside, a piece of filter floss on my intake. I also put the same filter floss on the intake on the outside as well. So with this all done, all you got to do is screw the top on, attach your ducts. I am pulling the air through with my AC Infinity inline duct fans. Again, I'm not doing any programming with those controllers. I'm simply turning the fan speed up to max right now. I think as it gets colder in the winter, I might slow it down a little bit because there is going to be such a huge difference in temperature. Uh, I might have to look at you know how condensation's forming or if anything's freezing due to that temperature differential. We'll cross that bridge when we come to it in the winter. I think the best way to combat that though is it's going to be slowing that air speed down. The intake air from this as well, when it goes through this duct, and I got a picture of it right here, it goes into an old Tropic Marin salt bucket that I drilled a few holes in, I put additional filter floss in it, and I filled a bunch of it up with carbon. What that is doing is it's just creating an air filter, so any of the outside air you pull in your house, it's going through a carbon filter before it goes in your fish room. It's very important you do this. You don't ever want to pull outside air in without some kind of carbon and filter floss on it. You don't want your neighbor to spray pesticides uh, or insecticides or have anyone else doing things outside that you might get vapors drawn into your house. So always do that to help protect your system. How is the DIY HRV working? Well, it's working pretty darn good. I have seen my CO2 levels 
drop from that thousand parts per million to where they're pretty much averaging out in that 600 range depending on the time of day sometimes it'll creep up to 700 and I'll see it get as low as 450 it's really done a great job in just helping to get the CO2 out of my fish room I did see the pH start to noticeably climb as the CO2 levels have reduced. But I'm going to talk more about that another day when I do a system update. So that's the video for today on the DIY HRV. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up. If you want to see more, subscribe. I don't put videos out too often, but I do try to share projects like this DIY HRV with everybody. Thanks again for watching everybody, and I'll see you on the next video.